Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, it has been a while since we reacted to Dr. Zucker Nike. Today, we're going to react to a heated exchange with a Christian lady about Jesus in Qatar. So from what I heard so far is that this Christian lady gave Dr. Zucker Nike a lot of pressure, especially when it comes down to Jesus being the word of God, the manifested word of God, the incarnate word of God in this world. This is, of course, in stark contradiction to the Islamic theology. I'm very curious to see this heated exchange. With no further ado, let's have a look. Yes, yes sister, most welcome. Can I have your name and your profession and a question, sister? All right, so my name is Rose and I work for Qatar Airways. Hello, Rose. My question is, I've heard you talk about religion so much and I'll speak of the Bible because that's what I'm aware of. You say, you talk of Jesus as religious leader. But as far as I'm concerned, Jesus did not come to introduce any religion. Neither is he a religion, religious leader. What Jesus introduced in this world was the kingdom of God. The second question. I have to interrupt right there. How did Jesus introduce the kingdom of God during his time? There was no talk about him introducing the kingdom of God, but rather him giving the way to the people of returning to the kingdom of God. So there was no talk about a physical kingdom whatsoever, but a spiritual one. Maybe you can elaborate uh, which religion is God? Because as far as I do research, what? I've come to understand that Jesus, who is my Lord and my Savior, he did not introduce any of those. He introduced the government of heaven. In other words, he wanted to colonize world like with heavenly power. There's a lot of controversies. I don't really understand the lady. There are a lot of different words. Ultimately, she said that which religion is God and Jesus is her Lord and Savior. Ultimately, you said nothing. The other question is... Sister, please pose one question. I'm already posted two questions. After the answer, you can have the next question. Or ten okay. even. I don't one know question. what she posted. The sister has two questions. And I believe the sister is a Christian. She said that I said Jesus was a religious leader. I never said that. I never ever said... Jesus, peace be upon him, was a religious leader. I said he was a messenger of God. There's a world of a difference between messenger of God and religious leader. Which a the messenger Bible states of God well. is far superior. We have many religious leaders in the world today. Jesus sure. Christ, peace be upon him, was a messenger of God. And you said in your question that he is your Lord and your Savior. Yes. First, let me tell you, sister. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He had we to believe the sentence soft, that no. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was one of the mightiest messengers of Almighty God. We believe that he was the Messiah, which is translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern day Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Muslims and the Christians, we are going together. But one may ask, then where is the parting of faith? The parting of faith is that most of the Christians believe, including yourself, that we come to know from a question, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, claimed divinity. And most of the Christians believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is God. Let me remind you, sister, I'm a student of comparative religion. I've read the Bible. There is not a single unequivocal, unequivocal statement, statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. If, sister, you can point out a single unequivocal statement from anywhere in the no. Bible, a single <laughs> unambiguous statement 
from anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me, I, Zakir Naik, am ready to accept Christianity today. I have heard you start saying that. I am not times. speaking on behalf of the uh, other Muslims. Right. I am ready to put my head on the guillotine. There uh, is not a single unequivocal statement. Hear my question clearly. Hear my challenge clearly, sister. There is not a single Which is correct. Of course, the Trinity is not mentioned, nor is there mention that Jesus says that he is God, quite the opposite. He proclaims that he is the Son of Man. If we look into the Old Testament, we will see as well, there are statements about God not being the Son of Man. And Jesus clearly states over and over again that he is the Son of Man. Of course, however, to be able to worship Jesus without becoming a polytheist, you would have to proclaim that somehow Jesus is God as well. If you, however, have Jesus as God, the Father as God, the Holy Spirit as God, now you are again in polytheism and now again you have three gods. So what to do? You say, no, there is only one God, but this God somehow miraculously has three persons. And Jesus being the second person of that God makes him still God. However, yet again, there is not one single unequivocal statement that claims that Jesus is God. This is only due to the perception of the early church fathers that came to the conclusion that if you combine, mix and match certain passages within the Bible, you come to the conclusion then that yes, God indeed is a trinity. A statement, not a single unequivocal statement where Jesus Christ, word, peace eh? be upon him, himself says, that I am God, or where he says, worship me. True. Yes, sister. I have an answer to that, sir. Yes, in the book of John, the Bible says that in the beginning was it's the Word, John. the Word was John. God, and the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh. Sure. What I want you to wait, know wait, is wait, that... Wait, 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 sister. That does not fulfill my challenge at all. You, you name the book, I will give you reference. You are quoting from Gospel of John, chapter number one, verse number one. And the word became flesh is verse number 11, 12, 13. You are quoting only the book. I'm giving you chapter number, verse number. I answer but, me. Wait, wait, the I'm, word became God. But what does that full, say? Yeah, ultimately, in the beginning, there was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. If we dissect this claim of John metaphysically, we see that God is one, and then God speaks a word. And this word, therefore, because God is uniquely one, cannot be outside of God, cannot be anything but God, and therefore is inseparable of God. Hence, the word of God ultimately is still God. Just as we say, hey, this is my nose here and it is inseparable of my body. So therefore, yes, it is Bobby's nose, but ultimately this here is Bobby as well. This is her mind game here. And to play devil's advocate here, the same critique has been proposed to Islam as well. When we're speaking about the Quran, the Quran being the word of God, therefore the word of God, yet again, not being separable of God, hence the Quran. Quran must be God by that standard. Sister, were these the words spoken by Jesus, peace be upon him? And the answer is no. What is my challenge? Not a single unequivocal statement, not a single unambiguous statement from anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says. Himself says means that should be in red letter. There is something called as red letter Bible. If you are a Christian, you may be aware of it. Yeah, okay. Red letter He's means the same Jesus points. Christ, peace be upon himself said. Gospel of John, chapter number one, verse number one to 13 is not in red. I'll answer it. Wait here, let us answer it. First of all, you have not fulfilled my challenge. It should be Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself says. These are not the words of Jesus. It is the word of a Jew by the name of Philo. Correct? It's the word of a Jew by the name of Philo. And John. never ever did he claim divinity for this. Yet, I will help you. What does it say? In the big, anyway, your quotation wasn't correct. I will give you the verbatim quotation. Gospel of John, chapter number one, verse number one says, In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And later on it says the word became flesh. If you agree exactly. that the word is God and if you change word is to God, in the beginning was word becomes in the beginning was God and God was with God, do you mean to say there were two gods? 
No, because the word of God, sir. It's not really a fair explanation. You pose the question. Yet again, the same applies to the Quran, the Quran being the eternal speech of God not being created. So if the Quran is not created, but it is the eternal speech of God, by that default, it is God as well. The Christian perspective is that Jesus is this uncreated word of God. You pose the question, I'm taking You don't a allow people to give answers. You, are, you pose the question, I'm giving the answer. After I finish the answer, you can speak. You can't interrupt. Did I interrupt you when you were speaking? Did I interrupt? Yes or no? Now oh. when I'm giving the answer, why are you interrupting? Let me finish the answer, then you can answer. <laughs> Point number one, you didn't fulfill my challenge. It is not the word of Jesus. Your whole argument goes out. Yet I'm answering. You did not tell, you should say, sorry, Dr. Zakir, it is not the word of Jesus. Did you say that? No. You are not honest. Tell to the... Tell to the audience, these are not the words of Jesus, peace be upon him. Am I right or no? That's you don't know, see? You are quoting and you don't know. I am a student of comparative religion. These words are not spoken by Jesus, peace be upon him. Yet I am answering. If you say the word is God, and if you substitute words with God, it means in the beginning was the word, becomes in the beginning was God. God versus God. Were there two gods? And the answer is no. I'll give you a third answer. If you uh, read okay, the this really a dumb argument. Yet again, you can apply the same logic to the Quran, man. The Not first fair. time the word God is used, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. It is hothios. Hothios in Greek and Aramaic means the God. The second time the God is used, it is tonthios. Hothios means the God, Almighty like God. Allah. Tonthios means godly person. But unfortunately, in the translation, they are taking you for a ride. You go to the original manuscript of Gospel of John, chapter number one, verse number one. The first time the word God is used, it is hothios, meaning the God. Second time it is used, it tonthios, means a godly person. So it reads, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the God. And the word was a godly person, meaning a messenger of God. That's actually even worse because it describes then that the word of God itself is a distinction within the multiplicity of God and hence becomes a person of God. This actually confirms the Trinity. And no. this is called I'm unbiased. You understand English. That's you tell me what English. I said is wrong. Really I'm quoting your scholars. I'm quoting your Bible. You pick up any Bible of red letter Bible. These words are not in that point number one. You go to the Greek and Arabic. Do you know Greek sister? Do you know Greek and Aramaic? Was the Bible revealed in English? Was the Bible revealed in English, sister? Yeah, it was Greek. Greek and Aramaic. So the original word is Hothios. Do you know what the meaning of Hothios? Go home and Google. Hothios, maybe I'm pulling a fast one. All right, one. sir. All right, wait, sir. wait, wait, wait. Hothios it means the God. Tontheos means a God, godly person. That means even if I agree, it says Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a messenger of God. Do you believe in that? No. He's, bi he's bigger than messenger. He's not just a messenger. Yeah, it's you a have to believe that, however, because even the Bible states that Jesus was a messenger. He to sister, call my Lord sister, a messenger. Sister, sister, I ask you. We will you do something to prove something, sir. But first say that what you quoted is wrong. You agree it is wrong, then we go to the next question. I don't agree. That means what you said is it's not word of Jesus. That means you're fooling the people, right or wrong? Did you, you, you thought I did not know, correct? No, I'm, I'm not here to demonstrate knowledge, sir. I'm it here to demonstrate. It is not the question of knowledge. It is the I'm question of Bible. Knowledge. You believe Bible what is the word for? of God, correct? Yes, I do. I don't believe it is the word of God. Even though you believe the Bible is the word of God, I know Bible more than you, right? There is one thing to know the Bible. There is another thing to have the revelation of the Bible. Because you know, even when Jesus came, the people who did not understand who he was were religious leaders. They missed big time. Sister, they did not know who he was because sister, he was hidden. And the work of the New Testament. One place in the Bible where the un un unambiguous statement, unequivocal statement, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself, says, I am God, or if he says, worship yeah, me, okay. I am ready to it's accept this challenge. Simple strategy. challenge. 
I'm not saying that it's wrong to call out Christians and tell them to actually quote where Jesus proposes that he is God. However, he didn't go into the depths of the argument that the word of God is a personage of God. Very important distinction here. And show one verse from this big Can I ask of you a question, sir? Can you separate yourself from your word? Good Sorry? question. Can you separate Dr. Zakai Naik from his word? Can you separate Dr. Can you separate yourself question. from your word? But what difference does it make whether I can or whether I cannot? You see, yeah, you don't get it, it. Jesus is the word of God made flesh. But what religious the? mind is too big for five senses. Jesus is the word of God and himself, he is God. The Bible every, says he gave him the name that is above every other name, every, which is the word of God. Every messenger gets the word of God. Moses was the word of God. Jesus was the word of God. Abraham was the word of God. Prophet Muhammad is the word of God. Question. So what is the problem? Which of every the messenger, messenger did what Jesus at this did? time is the word of God. What is so different about Jesus? Peace mm, yet again, now he's saying that all the messengers are the word of God, but he's using a metaphorical speak here, of course. However, when it comes down to the Quran, I'm sure Dr. Zakir Naik would say that the Quran is the literal word of God. God and looking at the Quran, then you would have to admit that we have a manifestation within this world of God's word, which is eternal, of course. And therefore, what is it then? If God cannot be described at all, if there is no distinction in God, if there is no multiplicity in God, but we have the Quran physically here, we can look at it. So are we looking at God? Yes or no? Upon him. You the cannot difference. point out a single statement from your Bible where Jesus said, I'm uh, God over his very worship. Lame I have, I have an answer for a that. Very sir. lame argument, man. Since the, the beginning of the word of, of the Bible, till the time of Jesus, tell me any of the messenger you call who was capable to cast out devils, to heal the sick. Why? Because in the beginning, it was only God who had power to deal with the devil from the fall of, the, from, of man in the Garden of Eden. But these Sister, things were hidden for salvation Sister, of men. If a person takes out devils from a person, does he become God? Today there are many people who do rukya yes, and they take I out do devils. The same they don't become I've God. Been translated into the kingdom That's of God's dear son. Today, sister, there are many human beings, even in Qatar. You have who can do rukya and can take out devils from the human being. Because that does they, not make them God. Does they it make get, them God? They got that power from Jesus. I cast out devils myself. Oh, in so the name of Jesus. Oh, so I'm you also sure become God now? No, I, I have been translated because of my faith in Jesus. The I Bible agree says, with you. You, listen, you, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. If you read the Bible, in the gospel, when he gives life to the dead Lazarus, he prays to Almighty God. Every miracle Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did, he did in the name of God. He didn't do on his own. If Same you would thing give the Bible me time, says. I will explain to all these congregations what is all about Sorry, we don't, have, we don't have the time. You can hire the hall mm -hmm. and tomorrow give a lecture. This is a question you answer time. Answer me. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. I have to say I'm not impressed at all with Dr. Zucker Nike's debate strategy. That being said, yet again, I am not a Trinitarian. I do not agree with the doctrine of the Trinity. However, she made a point. She clearly displayed that, yes, within John, even though it doesn't come from Jesus, but we have the claim that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So what does that mean? Even if we look at it Islamically, kun faya kun, God says and it is, right? God creates through his word. So we cannot distinguish his word from him. It is what it is. When we are speaking about messengers, yes, they are metaphorically the word of God. They're bringing the word of God, so to say. But they're not really the embodiment, the word of God. However, that claim has been made about the Quran and about Jesus. Jesus being the word of God that has incarnated into the flesh and the Quran being the transmutation the transliteration of God's word into a book. It says kitab, so therefore, yes, it is a book. God's word became a book 
by the Muslim perspective. And now we have an issue here. Therefore, I do understand the Trinitarians as well. The issue is, if we have God's word in a book form, but we say that God, Allah, is like nothing within his creation, but at the same time we do see the book, the word of God here, we do have a contradiction. Because ultimately we can see God's word, which is God, within this creation. Please let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this. Of course, this is a philosophical debate and doesn't really bother the common layman. I truly believe that God is one. And for the common person, this is all they need to know. They need to understand God is one and that's that. However, philosophically dissecting the distinction made between God and his word is crucial if you really want to understand the multiplicity within the unity of God. At least I personally think so. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. Let me know yet again in the comment section what you guys think. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below, guys. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.